Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'd like to discuss the uh, main fact of being blamed for the crash in the pound last week, how Liz Truss initially tried to rally confidence and then has arguably done more to damage it by allowing her chancellor to sack the most senior civil servant at the Treasury, someone who was extremely well regarded. This is actually going to make investors more wary about supporting the pound just at the time when she needs more confidence in it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So pretty much the first thing Labour did when they last won power was to make the Bank of England independent of political control. It's also one of the few legacies from that time that the current Tory government have not dismantled and burned. You know, when I say that proportional representation is the most important policy to me to support right now, I say that on the basis that if you look at the good that the last Labour government did, and then you look at what's left, you sort of realise the only way to move forward as a nation is to make it way harder for the vandals to keep coming back. Because if Labour win the next election, and no matter what they do, if there's not proportional representation as part of the plan, I'll be thinking this is just fleeting respite. But anyway, over this summer in the Tory leadership contest, there was talk about doing all sorts of mad things, including breaking up the Treasury and taking control of the Bank of England. It was an idea that Truss implied she would consider. Of course, it was difficult for onlookers to tell which of Truss's statements were an expression of what she intended to do and what was just trying to appeal to party members. But Truss kept talking about, you know, removing this independence of the Bank of England. So when it was announced that she had won the contest, the pound tanked against the dollar. In fact, Truss should be pleased because it hit the, whole, the lowest level since the days of Thatcher. Now, she wants to emulate Thatcher, so she should be delighted. Other people, however, were not. So MPs rushed to be clear that nobody was threatening the independence of the Bank of England. No, 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 totally off the table. I mean, we're already headed into a recession, a big one by all accounts. We have raging inflation even though her energy plan at least curbs that. But the last thing we need now is a run on the pound. So it looks like Truss wanted to calm market fears down, that her idle speculation was just political for the purposes of getting party members to vote for her, but no intention of doing anything, panic over, no problems. But then, oh dear, new Chancellor Kwasi Kwarteng sacks the permanent secretary to the Treasury, Sir Tom Scholar. This is the most senior civil servant at the Treasury, one of the most senior in the whole of government. Reason? Kwarteng said that the problems with Britain's economy were down to, no, 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 it's not them and the Brexit, no, 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 it's down to the same old economic managerialism. Yes, OK, two things. First of all, the economy was doing fine until Brexit and the takeover of the government by the ERG. Secondly, policy is dictated by ministers. Various people, including former senior civil servants, have said how bad a move this is. Scholar was highly regarded. This will do nothing to calm the markets down. What investors want, just like business owners, is predictability. A business needs to know what the lay of the land is for years into the future in order to make sound business decisions. This is why when you have a new regulation or a new law comes out that will affect businesses and investment, there's a period of time for people and businesses to adapt. So you pass a law, but it doesn't come into effect, usually for a good couple of years. A move like this tells people that the government is about to change direction on something in a fairly major way, but it doesn't tell them what, how or when. And this is double trouble because trust needs people to invest in the pound. Her energy plans require massive borrowing. Not just enough to compensate for the extra cost of producing energy. She needs way more than that because she's going to be using on most of this borrowing to protect the windfall profits of both oil and energy companies. But borrowing for the UK is not like borrowing for a person. You don't go to the bank and ask for a loan. They need to sell government bonds. In order to borrow more than planned, they need to sell more than planned. And in order to sell more than planned, they need to make them more attractive to investors. An investor doesn't look at a UK government bond and ask, will it make a profit or not? It'll always make a profit. Of course, it'll make a profit. We're not going to default on them. What they ask is, will it make as big a profit as something else I could use my money to invest in? That's the trick. 
anything that the government does to make investors nervous is not going to help. It'll mean one of two things happens. One, she has to make the bonds return a higher yield to attract wavering investors. But that means the, the, the dividends paid up from tax revenue. So we have to pay more when it's dividend time. Trust probably doesn't mind that because these, these things mature in like 10, 15 years. So she'll be long gone from government when it does. But she still leaves the country with a massive bill to pay. Second, she can't sell enough bonds. You know, then she doesn't have the money for her energy plans. And it's not like she can just chop public services, the usual Tory trick. Her three predecessors already paired it to the bone. There's nothing left. But there's another problem with sacking Scholar. So people have accused the government, both civil servants and politicians, of risking the politicisation of the civil service. The reason for this is, as I say, ministers decide policy, officials carry it out. Yes, if the plan is insane, the official will warn their minister of the various outcomes and how another plan might be preferable. But the minister still decides, and if they put their foot down, it all happens. This is why the most insane policies have been brought into being. Civil service can't stop them. Brexit, the hard Brexit, the immigration policy that's crushing our businesses to public services. All of Patel's madcap schemes, in fact. They all went through because civil servants carry out the wishes of the government. They can say, this isn't a great idea, or this is going to cost a lot of money and do nothing, or this idea might be better. But if the minister says, no, I want to do this, it's like, okay then. Kwarteng is, as other Tories have done before him, trying to suggest the problems we are having is down to civil servants not being of the ma right mindset. On one level, it's just blaming others for their own impotence again. They know blaming the EU isn't as effective these days, although they still do it. So now they're blaming everyone else. Judges, teachers, nurses, doctors, police officers, civil servants. They've run out of road and election will be fast approaching now. For some, losing power might mean more than just losing power. If, as is happening in the United States right now, there were to be some, I don't know, criminal investigations launched at some point. Well, how would they be able to block them if they no longer have power? Although I have little confidence this will happen, I wouldn't uh, get your hopes up. But you can't rule it out. The stakes are actually quite high for some of these traitors to their own country. And doing the right thing and winning the election by actually doing what's best for people, because that would be a good way to win it, that doesn't seem to be an option. So how do they defend against accusations that the country's in a mess and they're the ones who've been in power for 12 years? Well, they blame the woke left agenda in the media and in the civil service. Basically, their defence is to plead incompetence. And the victims in this are, of course, us, the UK population. Not even the senior civil servants, you know, that the, the government have been sacking across various departments over the last few years. They're not going to be retiring into poverty by any means. No, it's the public who lose out on their expertise and have to suffer the consequences of having a government department led by an insane minister and presided over by an official who doesn't need to be competent as long as they grovel a lot. What could go wrong? Well, actually, we saw what went wrong in the various government departments where this had already happened, including the Foreign Office and the Home Office. We're now going to see what it does at the Treasury. At the least serious level, at the least serious level, we have a brand new Chancellor who knows nothing about the role yet. And now he's going to be assisted by a brand new Permanent Secretary. The two most senior managers of the Treasury the massive department that manages the UK economy, an economy that's incredibly fragile right now, is being led by people with no experience in their roles. That's the less serious end of this. At the other end, we have a brand new chancellor who is talking about doing something revolutionary, but not saying what that is. And he's going to be asking someone to implement these schemes where it's been made clear that the intended outcomes are political, not economic. Not practical. This is completely outside of the normal practice of any civil servant. You know, look at the Home Office, for example. The Rwanda scheme was never intended to actually divert asylum seekers from the UK. That's how it's billed to the racists. That's how the Daily Mail, you know, report it. But it was never intended to do that. It doesn't do that. The deal with Rwanda meant paying vast sums of money so that Rwanda would take a small token number of, of asylum seekers, a few hundred. But in return, we also take some of theirs that they don't want. So it doesn't actually reduce the number of asylum seekers in Britain at all. 
It was just a very expensive way of trashing our reputation on human rights around the world and getting some positive headlines in the Tory gutter press. That's all it was. It was spending money to buy positive headlines in the Daily Mail and Daily Express and the Sun. The worry is that the Treasury are going to embark on something similar. Policies that are intended to stoke outrage, push their culture wars so that they can say they're sticking two fingers up at the woke establishment but will actually just be a costly nightmare. And the consequences are arguably more serious because this department manages the economy. And they're doing it as we enter a massive recession, have high inflation that's going to get higher, despite the fact the energy bills, uh, the energy plan, sorry, stops it going as high as it could do. It's still going to get higher than it is now, where unemployment is about to massively increase, where our exports continue to struggle, facing supply issues of all sorts, and war in Europe. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. And until next time, I'll see you later.